write a program to accept a four digit year and check to see if it is a leap year or not. Okay. Now, what years are leap year? Because once we understand what year, what kind of years are leap year, we'll be able to write proper code logic. In the meanwhile, let me save this program or save it as maybe. Yes, guys, what is the definition of a leap year? There's a there's an extra day, right? Yeah, but how often does it occur? Every four years. Every four years. So leap year is is a year that is completely divisible by four. So year 2020 was the last leap year because the last two digits 20 is divisible by four. So the next one will be 2024. Okay, that's how the leap years will go. Is that the only condition? A lot of the people do not know about the other condition. If it is a century year, for example, 100, 2000, 2300, then it must be completely divisible by 400. It's only true for century years. Just to prove the point here, the year 1900 is completely divisible by four. You get 475. But year 1900 was not a leap year. The, the leap year, that a century year that was a leap year was the year 2000. The next century year that will be a leap year will be the year 2400. Okay. So almost after like 279 years, the next leap year will come, which is like a century year. So that's the condition to check for. So now, now we are writing the code logic here that we have a variable called year that we will be converting to an integer. And we'll be taking an input, enter a year. If year is completely divisible by four. So remember, we use the modulus operator to check to see if it is completely, I mean, like what is the remainder after the division is done? That's a modulus operator. If that equals zero, then we know it's a leap year for sure, right? However, we are not sure yet because we need to also check to see if maybe it's a century year. So if year is completely divisible by 100, okay, then it's a century year. Century year check 
Okay, so this is my leap year check. Okay, just because it turns out to be a century year, that doesn't mean it will be a century leap year until and unless I make sure that it is completely divisible by 400. So century year is a leap year if it is completely divisible by 400. Okay, so we're making all these different checks. So if we have come down all the way till that year 400, we can now say, that the following year is a leap year. Otherwise, the following year is not a leap year. So that's only for 400 check. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> if it is not a century year, if it is not a century year, however, the if condition from line number um, uh, 10 was true. So if line 10 was true, that means it is completely divisible by four but it is not a century year because not divisible by 100, then it will still be a leap year. It will not be, it will not be a century year, but it will still be divisible by four, so it's a leap year. If the condition from line number 10 is false, then for sure, it's not a leap year, okay? Let me test this code here. So I will enter a value of 1999, and that is not a leap year because 1999 will be false according to line number 10. So it'll jump directly to line number 18. Then I will enter 2000, 2000 is true according to line 10. It will be true according to line 11. It will be true according to line number 12. So the year 2000, oops, I bet I should rerun it. Huh? I forgot to rerun it. Okay, the year 2000 is a leap year. Now let me run it again. This time I will enter year 1900. Now year 1900 is divisible by four. So number 10 will be true. Is divisible by 100. So 11 will be true, but is not divisible by 400. So 12 will be false. So 14 will be true. So it's not a leap year. Now I will try with the value 2024. I need to run it again. 2024. So now 2024 is true according to the if condition from line 10, false according to line 11. So it will never visit line 12 all the way through 15. That whole block will be ignored because it's not true according to line 11. So it'll jump automatically down to line 16. So 2024 is a leap year. So this would be an example of a nested if where, and as you know, in Python, each tab space creates a nested if. So line number 12 is nested in line 11, or rather lines, lines 12 through 15, the entire structure is nested in 11. So if 11 is false, you will not visit any of this. You will directly jump to 16. Okay.